Well, joining us now to take a closer look of all this movement in Washington and the Department of Justice is Roy Little, former federal prosecutor and UC Hastings law professor. First off, what is the deal with the Department of Justice when it comes to investigations? There's a lot of conjecture here that whatever's happening has waited until the midterm elections were over. Right. And it's now Sessions is out as attorney general, new guy is in, is acting, and the Mueller investigation is all up in the air. So th two things are true. First, Bob Mueller knew this was coming, that we knew before the midterm elections that Sessions was likely going to be out and that somebody was going to be put in. And this fellow Whitaker, Matt Whitaker, who's now the acting AG, was named as the person they thought was likely to come in. So Bob Mueller knows this is coming, and I predict that he has done things to prepare for it. That's one. Two, you didn't hear anything from Mueller for two months because there is a Department of Justice policy that says you should not do things in an investigation that could influence an oncoming election unless there's some reason to do it. In other words, go silent unless there's some reason to be going public. So I think Bob Mueller was observing that policy. He's still been working on the investigation. There's still been grand jury things that are happening that we don't know about. There could be sealed indictments that we don't know about. And now those are all sitting on the desk of this fellow, Matt Whitaker, because Rod Rosenstein is removed out of the chain of command once this Whitaker is the acting attorney general. I hear it through the uh, congressional members. Uh, the call went out this week. They were talking about it. That indictments are sitting on the desk, not for Trump, but for uh, his son, Don Jr., and for uh, Kirshner, son-in-law. Could be. Could be. Uh, and that the move was to put Whitaker in, get Sessions out, so Whitaker could fire Mueller. Is that possible once... I don't think it's possible that he could fire him. There are, there are Department of Justice regulations that are, have the force of law. Say you can't fire the special counsel without some good cause. But those regulations also say anything the special counsel wants to do have to be approved by the attorney general. So those indictments, if there are sealed indictments or other things happening, there may be a subpoena for the president sitting on the desk. Who has would to make be the approved. call on that? Who would do the approval? Would it, it be the Whitaker, to, the new guy? Has to be approved by the attorney general. Whitaker is currently the attorney general. And what the rule says is if the attorney general doesn't want to approve it and, and they have to have a good reason for not approving it, then it has to be reported to Congress, has to be reported to both sides of Congress, both the ranking chair and the minority. So it would go public? It would go to Congress. Now, whether that would go public, I mean, people like you, of course it'll go public. <laughs> <laughs> and that would be the, the next chapter. Witch hunt or deep investigation? Depends on who you talk to or depends is there on, a different Depends line? on which side you're on, really, witch hunt. But, you know, sometimes there are witches, right? I mean, that's the problem. Sometimes the prosecutor is actually looking at something that could really be a problem. And, and so an aggressive investigation goes after people that we know there was Russian interference in the election. The question is, where does it get traced to? And how did it happen? And where did the money go? Okay. The last time we had a special prosecutor that made big news, it was Ken Starr, and we were talking about Bill Clinton. And he went in looking at a real estate deal called Whitewater. Right. And we wound up with Monica Lewinsky. Right. That had nothing to do with it. So there was was a, that a witch hunt or an investigation? There was a formal application made by Ken Starr, the special prosecutor, to the attorney general. I would like to expand my jurisdiction to include these other things that have come up in the course of my investigation. And that was granted, and that's where that came from. That could be happening here. We don't know so all the documents. could the attorney general say no? Could the attorney general have said, no, I don't want you looking at, at Monica Lewinsky? This is about Whitewater and Whitewater only. Yeah, currently under the regulations, the attorney general has that authority. Back then, there had to be a court involved. That's not so true today. So currently, the acting attorney general, which is Whitaker, just appointed by Trump, right. could say within legal rounds, no, I don't want you going there, right? Yeah, he has to say that it is so inappropriate or completely unwarranted that it should not be done. And at that point, the regulation says there must be a notification to Congress. That's the check. Okay, if somebody says, I disagree with you and I'm going ahead with this, like a Robert Mueller, does that person then have the power to fire them? Well, if he were to go ahead, uh, contrary to a direct order from the attorney general, I think that would be cause to fire, actually. Bob Mueller is not a guy who, who does that. He is not a bomb thrower. He is a steady, aggressive, responsible prosecutor. And, and my guess is he'll work that out politically. I don't think Whitaker right now has the political power to withstand a direct opposition with Bob Mueller. Now, I'm familiar with the court systems. 
you are too. And once things start getting filed, there's what we used to call a paper trail. There, there, it's written up. It's there. It's sitting there. It's, it's, it's flashing. You can't get rid of it. Has Mueller, could have he laid out enough stuff right now that regardless of what the president may want to do or can do, it's still going to sit there and make its way through the system? I think for sure he has got a paper trail laid out in other offices as well, the Southern District of New York, the main Department of Justice, other components. He has left paper trail all over, and the House now has investigative subpoena power on the Democratic side. So, question. If all of this is going to happen no matter what, one way or the other, what was the point of firing Jeff Sessions? He did not want Rod Rosenstein to be in the chain. He wanted his own person to be in charge of approving the special counsel uh, work. And Whitaker is a different person than Rod Rosenstein. But if Whitaker makes one move to try to circumvent this or cut it off, you know and I know it's going to blow well, up. Well, let me just say, there's a timing problem. When he, when he does something and says to the special counsel, I'm not going to let you do that, he doesn't have to notify Congress right away. He actually gets to wait until the conclusion of the investigation, whatever that is. You may see Bob Mueller take a press conference, his only press conference in 18 months, and say, today we have concluded our investigation and it's sitting on the AG's desk, and that'll be a signal to Congress you can get interested. And we'll all get interested at that point. I want to thank you for joining us this morning okay. as the wheel continues to turn in the drama in Washington, D.C.